Hello, kids in the faith. Our lesson for today is a seed forever. The revelation, Christ's throne will last forever. The word of the day comes from 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 13. I will set up thy seed after thee, and I will establish his kingdom, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 13. Hi fam, hi guys, and welcome back to another Kids in the Faith video service. We are so excited that you guys took time out to join us for another video service and just to learn more about God, everything he has in store for you, and just get that encouragement in the beginning of the week because school's back in <laughs> was it hard for some of you guys or were you like so excited you were up out of bed before your mom told you to get up like two people huh? two people that's okay you're gonna get back into it and we pray that this is gonna be awesome school year and you guys are just gonna excel you're gonna share the love of god and just win over your classmates, your friends for Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word, Father. Thank you for your glory, Father. We just thank you for the teacher that's bringing forth the lesson, Father, your message, Lord God. Give them the words to say, Father God. Let this lesson touch our hearts, Father God, that we not only grow from it today, Lord, but we continue to grow, Lord. We just thank you for your awesome power and your glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, let's put away those distractions, put on those listening ears, and let's get to our lesson. Hello, kids in the faith. We pray you had a great week. We know that school is back in, and we pray that the Lord blesses and cover you and keep you safe like a blanket. And we also pray that you are praying for yourself as well as your friends. Well, today we have a very exciting lesson, kind of bittersweet. And the title of our lesson for today is A Seed Forever. And the illustrated sermon is The Rise and Fall of King Solomon. Now we learned uh, quite a few things about Solomon in the past, but one thing we know that he was the son of King David who is now dead and he reigned after his father. Solomon had a great reign in his younger days. He made this great sacrifice to God that pleased God so much that God visited him while he slept. So while he slept, God came to him and told him that he could have anything that he desired. So after careful thinking, Solomon told God he desired wisdom to govern his people because they were so great in number and he wanted to judge them in righteousness. Okay then, so this pleased God so much that Solomon didn't ask for anything for himself. His request wasn't selfish that God not only gave him wisdom, but he gave him prosperity and power. He had so much power, there was not any king around in the area that was able to equal up to him. So now during this time, they had a, um, an area of just peace and calmness. So Solomon, by the direction of the Lord, using the wisdom that God had given him, erected the temple the temple that God had told his father David that his son would erect. Solomon erects this beautiful temple because he gets the instruction from God and he follows every detail to the T. Just as God tells him to do, he does it. And then with all the wisdom that he had, people came from near and far to learn of the wisdom that God had given Solomon and to hear him teach. Even the Queen of Sheba came to sit at the feet of Solomon and to learn from him. She brought him some great questions, hard questions, but it was no match for the wisdom that God had given Solomon. 
So today our lesson starts in 1 Kings chapter 11. And we're going to see in 1 Kings chapter 11 how this bittersweet fall in the rise and fall of Solomon because it is a lesson of disobedience and the consequences that follow it. So we want you to listen very closely because I'm sure that you'll be able to use this lesson in your own lives. And we know that disobedience always comes with consequences. So again, open your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 11. And we're gonna start at verse one. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said to the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Now all of these foreign nations, we see that God had told the children of Israel, and that included even King Solomon, they weren't supposed to intermarry, not because they were of a foreign nation, but because they worshiped idol gods and they would turn their hearts unto their gods. Okay, let's continue in verse three. And he had 700 wives, that's Solomon now, and they which, call, or which are called princes, and 300 concubines, and, they, and his wives turned away his heart. Okay, we see that same phrase again, turn away his heart after other gods. So the same thing that God told him not to do, the reason he told him not to marry him, because they would turn away it, now we see that Solomon's heart is starting to turn away from God. Verse 4, For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with God the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. So after Solomon got old, what happens? His wives turn away his heart from the Lord God who gave him all that wisdom. So you know, it's kind of a little sad situation right here because now Solomon is doing just what God told him not to do. So what he does, he follows after the other gods. So God requires obedience to his word. That's our first point. Have you ever disobeyed your parents? You know, they may have told you to read a particular Bible passage and then when you get home, y'all was gonna discuss it. So when your mom and dad got home and they were talking about their day and about the lesson you all were gonna discuss, and then you let then you tell them, well, Bobby's mama said that she thought I should read another scripture. So your mom is like, well, how would you do what somebody else told you to do rather than what we instructed you to do? So you see, this is what happened with Solomon. He went after the other gods and that did not make God happy at all. And not only did he, you know, his heart turn away after these other gods, Solomon made another bad mistake. He set up these places of worship in the high mountains where they could, where all of these different wives could sacrifice to their gods. Now remember he had 700 wives, so that was a lots of altars that he was making. And the thing about it, not only did the wives always sacrifice, Solomon started sacrificing to these other gods. So you know, whenever we start disobeying God and sin enters in our lives, then judgment comes. So we're gonna start reading again in verse nine. Verse nine said, and the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. So God now is very angry with Solomon. First, because his heart is turned away from him, and now he's even worshiping idol gods along with his wives. Two things that was never supposed to happen. Okay, in verse 10, and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not the Lord commandment. Verse 11, wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, 
I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. So now here, God is just about to do something like he's telling Solomon, you disobeyed me. You did not follow my instructions and my commands as I've given you. I'm going to take this kingdom away from you and give it to someone else. Wow, that's not a good place to be. So verse 12, then he tells them, Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Because God had made a promise to David, he, God, always keeps his promise. So he's going to allow Solomon to stay on the throne and to still be king. But what he says he's going to do, he's going to take it when his son takes over. So you see that our uh, choices of disobedience or obedience, whatever we do, it not only affects us, it affects everyone that's connected to us. Verse 13, how be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. So God just like letting him know what he's going to do, but then God is still being gracious unto him. He's saying he's going to save one tribe. So that's a, a good thing right there. So verse 23 says, it's in the this now, and God stirred up adversaries. Razon, the king of Elazai, which fled from his lord, Hadaziah, king of Zoab. So now God is not only going to take away the kingdom from Solomon, he's also raising up enemies, somebody to come after him. Because if we remember, Israel was in a state of peace at one time, but this disobedience that Saul committed caused God to react, and he is going to take away the kingdom and, and then Israel is, you know, is going to be in a place, but then he made that promise that's right there, just kind of hiding in the back for a little while. So that's still there. And in verse 26, it says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of, Zor of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zariah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. So now all of this peace has gone away. And God is like, like setting it up to let them know what is going to happen. He's going to take away the kingdom. He's going to raise up enemies. He's going to give the kingdom, 10 of them, to one of Solomon's former servant named Jeroboam. So which brings us to our second point. God judges according to his word. Which brings to mind, have you ever had anything taken from you? How did you feel? Regardless if you did the wrong thing and you knew that you were going to get punished, sometimes it may have been like money, a game, just something that you couldn't have, uh, that you had that are a new phone, and they took it from you and gave it to one of your siblings. Now this is a servant that gets the throne, according to what God is telling Solomon. But your, your, your sibling lives in the same house with you, and you have to see them every day with your phone. So that would not make you happy. But that's how God judges according to his word. When he says that he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So our parents are a very good example of how we should live and respect and honor the word of God. Now we're going to read now in verse 31. And then Ajiah, uh, along the way, uh, Ajiah was the prophet that was in um, Jerusalem at the time. And he met Jeroboam, and he had this new garment. So we're going to just kind of fast forward there to verse 31. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus the Lord, the God of Israel, said, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to you. So now Jeroboam is like, Wow! You know, he did raise up against the king, but now he gets a word from the prophet. And we know when the prophet gives a word, that word is true. So he tells him this. But look what he tells him now. He says, but he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Astaroth, the goddess of the Zidonian. 
So God is letting them know why he's doing it. Because they went and they did things that they shouldn't have done. So God is going to take away and give to somebody else. Just like your parents do when you don't obey you, they have the right to take away things and give it to somebody else. Because sometimes we take our blessings that we get from God for granted. Sometimes we take our blessings from our parents, our friends for granted. But God always wants us to keep our eyes on him because he is the one that gives us, you know, these gifts, talents, and ability. He gave uh, Solomon the gift of wisdom. And then Solomon just kind of like, act like all of a sudden that he has uh, uh, made his arrival and he doesn't need God anymore in his life. So he's doing all of these things that's just not pleasing God. And verse 34 says, How be it, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give only one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen to put my name there. So now in these verses here, we see the... Um, God's grace is into action now because it's got God had the right to not do anything. But you know what? God keeps his promises. And he had told David that he would always have a seed to sit on the on the throne. So God never goes against his word, no matter how it may seem. He didn't give it to Solomon, but he said that the son would, would get it and he would rule in there. So all through ages, you know, we, 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 we get God grace in our lives. Even as children, sometimes we may do things and we get punished and we're supposed to be on punishment for two weeks, but after one week, your mom or your dad may come back and say, well, you, your behavior has been this or that, or I have promised you you could go to this place, so I'm gonna take, your, take you off of punishment and allow you to go to the show that we had promised you that you could see. So that's God's amazing grace in our lives. But from today's lesson, we pray and hope that you have learned how disobedience can lead us just so far off the path and cause us to lose our blessings that God has for us. So even as young children, practice a life of obedience. Start young. Listen to your parents, listen to your teachers, your grandparents, anyone that have rules over you, your coaches when you're playing a game, so when you're at church, wherever you are, learn to listen and be obedient. So we pray that this lesson has been most helpful to you for this week. And as always, we pray that you are sharing the good news with your friends and with your family members wherever you go. And just remember, until next week, you are that dynamic and effective youth ministry that leads by example. Be blessed and have a safe week. Well, fam, what'd you think? Did God speak to you through that lesson? Did the lesson make you think? Talk about it with your family. Talk about the lesson with your family. There may be things that they can help clarify to you, help you understand better, or even there might be something you can teach them. Hmm? How about that? All right, guys, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the lesson, Father God. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for giving your holy name. Father, we can never pay for thank you. You are so good to us, Father. You are worthy of all the true and holy. Father, we ask that you place your hedge of protection upon these kids and their families, Lord God. Protect them as they go to school and their class, Father God. Lord God, let wisdom, Father God, come to their hearts and their minds, Lord God. 
Let them not be influenced by any negative person or behavior, Father God. Lord, let the Holy Spirit just speak to their hearts and their minds, Father God. And let them turn to you, Father God, with anything that may be going on, Lord God. We just thank you that you are always there for us, Lord. You will never leave us, never forsake us. And you love us so much. We just thank you. You are always there for us. We praise you and we love you. In Jesus, amen. All right, guys. You will have a blessed week. And we cannot wait to see you again next Sunday for another Kids in the Faith video service. Bye, guys.